All right, turn on. You're stopping me from doing statistics. Here's a new hypothesis test. We're interested in knowing, does your class in college affect the way you get to school? So we ask a bunch of people, are you a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior? Do you walk or bus or drive? Those of you who ride a bicycle, you're out. I'm sorry. I, I can only fit three rows in here. I can't get them all on the chalkboard. So here's our null hypothesis. The way you get to school And we're going to use independent, or not related, or has nothing to do with, I'm going to go with independent. It's independent of your year in college. Now, do we believe that? Well, I don't know. Let's look. It seems like the seniors tend to do more driving to school. Freshmen tend to do more walking. Could there be a reason for that? And even if there is, is this enough data to be able to scientifically say, yes, there is a relationship between what year you are in school and what way you get to school? That's the question for the null. For the alternative, we're going to say your method of transportation of transportation depends on your year in college, okay? So the null hypothesis says, really, the, the different years and the different ways of going to school has nothing to do with it, okay? It's just luck. But the alternative says, no, 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 seniors tend to do one thing while freshmen tend to do something different. Which one do we believe? Well, let's, let's work the rest of it out. My alpha. Let's set that at 0.05. Why? Because everybody else does it. Chi squared. What are my degrees of freedom? I remember how to do this. You take away a row, you take away a column. How many blocks are left? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six blocks left. In other words, if I gave you these totals and then I filled in these six blocks, you could figure out the rest of it all on your own. Okay? So there's really only six degrees of freedom here. What does it equal? Well, to do this, I've got to figure out the rest of my tables. So the first thing I'm going to do is my expect these tables. Okay. I've got walking to school, taking a bus to school, and driving to school. All the bicyclers who are yelling at me because you're angry, I can't hear you. It's a video, okay? Like my father watching football. Ugh. Okay, so how do I get how many walker freshmen I expect? Well, for the freshman, I'm going to take 42 out of 150, 43 out of 150, and then I multiply it by the 150, which there's a 150 that cancels. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that means you didn't watch the very first video. So 43 times 42 over 150. 43 times 42 over 150, I get 12.04. We just cut a freshman into 0.04. That's okay, that doesn't bother us. We can handle that. All right? Now let's try this, this guy. 39 times 43 out of 150. 39 times 43 out of 150. That's 11.18. And I know what you're thinking. If this wasn't an online class, would you sit there and fill in the whole table in front of the class? And the answer is yes. Partly because it's good for them to see it over and over and over. By the time you're done, Everybody knows how to do expected values. However, this is an online class. You're not going to sit there and watch this video as I fill all those in. So watch the magic of movie magic. Boom. Isn't that cool? It's all of a sudden there. Now, if you had to, you should be able to get these all by yourself. Okay. Now, double check. Do these add up to 43? Do these add up to 43? The answer is yes. Do these add up to 42? Do these add up to 39? Okay, with a little bit of rounding, but that's the idea. So. Here's our expected values. It should make sense what's going on. Notice that we have just as many people who walk as ride the bus. So if it doesn't matter whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, then we should see the same numbers of walkers and bus riders for each of those categories. And notice also these, we have just as many sophomores as juniors. So we should see the same numbers for sophomore as for juniors. So the chi-squared table is very clever. It's put things in a nice ordered even pattern according to the totals, all right? And now we're ready to ask, 
Are these that far off? Are they really that different? Sure, it doesn't match exactly 12 and 20, but is it close? To answer that, we're going to make a chi-squared table. We're going to make a table that looks all squirvy. Let's try it out. That looks better. Three rows, three columns. Let's see if we can get this guy right here. What's he going to be? We're going to take 20 minus 12.04, square that, Divide by 12.04, put that right in there. So where's my calculator? I'm going to take 20 minus 12.04, square it, divide by 12.04. I get 5.26. That's big. Okay, 5.26. Let's try this guy. What do I do? I'm going to take 11.18 minus the 13, divide by the 11.18. So I'm going to do 11.18 minus the 13. Yeah. It occurs to me that I just did it backwards. It's supposed to be 13 minus the 11.18. But it doesn't matter for the chi-square because you're squaring it. Isn't that neat? You can make a mistake and still get the right answer. So it doesn't matter which one you subtract from which because if I go squared, that fixes it. Divide by the 11.18 and I get 0.296. Oh, that's a small one. 0.296. Okay? And now, because I am super speedy, I am going to fill in this whole table so fast you won't even believe it. Ready? <laughs> okay, so here's all our partial chi squares. You should be able to get those by now. Right. What do they tell us? Do they have any interesting information? Well, we're going to look at the big ones. What's big? Well, just comparatively, what's the biggest one here? That 5.26 actually might be the biggest one. Why is that so strange? Well, freshman walkers, we expected to have 12 freshmen, 12.04 freshmen that said they walked. We ended up with 20. That's a lot. Anything else that was weird? Um, right here. For the seniors that walk, we expected there would be 8.6. So somewhere around eight or nine seniors that said they walked, and we got four. So there's more freshmen walking to school and not as many seniors walking to school. That's starting to tip the balance. Can we say that there is a difference? Any other big ones? Uh, I guess this guy here. Juniors that walk to school is also a lot less than it should be. And juniors that drive is a lot more than it should be. Okay? so. There's, there's some evidence, maybe. Let's find out what our final chi-squared value is. I'm going to add all these up. Okay, I'm going to do it in my head. Carry the 2 plus the 7. Three, okay, so that's going to be a 15.36. You know, when you've done this as long as I have, it's just really easy to add all those up in your head <clears throat> with Excel in the background. So now I'm going to try to find my p-value. I know that the chi-square table is just like the T, so you're probably saying, don't do this the slow way. We know. But you know what? It, it's good for you. Let, let's just let's go to our table. Our degrees of freedom are 6. So this is the row that I'm looking at. That's my chi-square table for this problem. Every row is a different chi-square table. This is the one I want. The value that I got was 15.36. Is that a lot? I don't know. Let's, let's take a look. 15... Okay, so somewhere right in between these guys, 15.36 is right in between there. So what's my p-value? Right in between there. Do I need to worry about two-tailed, left-tailed, right-tailed? No, it's chi-squared. Okay, chi-squared is just always right-tailed. So that's between 1% and 2%. Let's add that to our board. Our p-value was between 1% and 2%. Can the computer actually tell me exactly what it was? Probably, except now I lost my Excel sheet. It's actually 0.017, but we don't need to know that exactly. To say it's between 1 and 2 percent is enough. If you compare that with 5 percent, our p-value has got to be less than our 5 percent. So this is going to be reject. We reject, which means we can conclude the alternative. Yay, it's exciting. What have we shown? Uh, the different years have different transportation methods. Well, what's a nice way of writing that with only this much board space left? Um, you're in school. How about is linked? Is correlated? Is is related to who wrote on my wall? Gosh, it's terrible. 
is related to method of transportation. Transportation method. So here we go. This data does prove that the different years in school have a different method of transportation. To get more specifically, the seniors walk less, the freshmen walk more, and the juniors walk less and drive more. Okay, we can look at those big, those big chi-squared values to tell what's doing it, what's causing it. But there is a chi-squared test. It's a test of independence, and I think one more video, and we'll be ready to try the homework.